On behalf of Cost Ukraine, I would like to welcome all of you at the presentation of the final results of the first in Ukraine verification of the um, infrastructure transparency index in Ukraine. A couple of words on about the, uh, the infrastructure transparency index. This is a cost instrument that measures levels of infrastructure transparency and the quality of the processes associated at the national or subnational levels. The purpose of this tool is the collaboratively designed based on international good practices and lessons learned and provision to stakeholders of quality information that serves the popularization of transparency and improvement of management of state and public infrastructure. Today I would like to thank the um, management of the head secretariat of cost information for the possibility to make this assessment possible in Ukraine and for fruitful cooperation and support in the course of the process that took place uh, during the uh, recent three months. In parallel, similar assessments were done uh, in other cost uh, pre uh, pre presentation uh, countries, and our colleagues are going to uh, speak about that a little um, later. I would like to express special thanks uh, today to everybody who joined in this process and who provided their support primarily to those who uh, were part of the interview and who spoke back and gave their feedback uh, to the program uh, experts, as well as to the infrastructure, Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine, the uh, Office of the President of Ukraine, the Ministry of uh, Digital Information, the Ministry of Territorial Development, uh, and other stakeholders. The assessment this year is only a pilot and we're going to improve this methodology together with our colleagues and everybody interested in Ukraine. Because in the course of the work we were able to see that it is crucial to develop a national index that would take regard to all of the peculiarities of our um, infrastructure, decentralization, and legislation. However, the results of the research of this study uh, showed us many key elements that we're going to continue talking about with the governmental authorities. The value of the fact that, that gives us real picture of accountability and um, transparency, although there were some rough sp uh, spots. And we, thanks to this study, we were able to see where we need to look at and where we need to work on, and we will continue uh, our cooperation with all stakeholders. And I, now I would like to uh, pass the microphone to Mr. Svetoslav Abramov, who is um, going to um, moderate our event today. So Svetoslav, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Katarina. Greetings to all of the colleagues. Today, we have a wonderful opportunity to get together and we're glad to present the results of this tedious work. As Katarina has pinpointed this assessment, this verification was carried out in several countries at once. The initiator of this uh, process was the International Cost Secretariat, and indeed it is a pilot event, a pilot um, measurement. And I would like to encourage to everybody to pay attention to that, and we will definitely be working on the improvement of this methodology which was newly applied here and um, our colleagues will provide you greater details but now I would like to give uh, the word to the head of the board of the um, cost international secretariat mr. Christian Portman please the microphone is yours good morning or good afternoon as I should say uh, because of all of you together in Ukraine. I'm speaking to you from Washington, D.C., and as I was being announced, I'm the chairman of the International Board of Cost, and um, it gives me extreme pleasure um, to be able to join you for this very important event. Um, at the same time, I have to say um, I congratulate you because the moment at which 
uh, the ITI or of the Infrastructure Transparency Index is seeing the light of day has been a day that we've been waiting for for a long time. And it is uh, thanks to countries like Ukraine and some others who have taken the lead in developing and piloting this index that we can now say that cost has added another important tool to its so-called toolkit and has become even more relevant than it has been before in uh, bringing greater transparency and accountability to infrastructure in the world and, uh, and obviously in, uh, in Ukraine. Um, a quick word about Ukraine. Ukraine is an important member of COST. Uh, Ukraine joined already some years ago. And I think the pace at which you and your government have been implementing uh, COST has been a tremendous uh, source of success and also a tremendous source of information. I think Ukraine has been experimenting and extending COST to an extent that we all in the COST family have learned about. Uh, and have learned lessons we have subsequently been able to apply to, uh, to other countries. So the experience of Ukraine and the level of activism, activism that you have deployed has been a great benefit to the organization and to the initiative. You may know that uh, we have had uh, uh, Natalie Forsuk from uh, Ukraine being part of our board and she has not only in Ukraine itself, but also with us on the board, helped tremendously in moving cost forward. The importance of cost um, has been growing rapidly over the years. Uh, we have now more than 20 members uh, and the relevance of cost has come out again during the COVID uh, experience in which cost procedures and processes have been used in the procurement of various COVID-related uh, investments. And as you know, the whole world is now talking about the recovery. The recent G7 meeting has indicated that infrastructure is a major part of what they collectively would like to see restart in the world at large. And the relevance of cost in being able to track that investment and to ensure that in the rush to bring out the recovery no shortcuts are taken and all attention has been given to the issues of transparency and accountability and infrastructure is critical. So we look forward to even greater um, experience, even greater attention being given to the initiative and things like we're celebrating today, which is the announcement of the Infrastructure Transparency Index um, in Ukraine and also in Costa Rica at the same time, which is also happening today, I think are important new steps in being able to demonstrate to the world that cost is extremely relevant and uh, we hope that it will inspire many other countries to join and to, uh, to equally participate in this, uh, in this work. Um, I think it's not up to me to talk about the various details of the <clears throat> transparency index um, has already been said in the introduction. It is a, a very important tool that has been developed to be able to track uh, progress in the implementation of the cost framework. Uh, as such, I should allow policymakers to better pinpoint which are the areas of uh, transparency and accountability and very importantly participation that need to be further developed in order to be able to present and implement the program in all its, its aspects. And uh, in that sense, I think it is uh, an important step, as I said at the beginning, not just for Ukraine, but for the cost uh, experience itself. So I'm delighted to be able to participate in this. Um, I'm delighted to see so many people present in this presentation. And uh, I'm confident that um, uh, Ukraine, again, will implement and use the Transparency Index very much the same way that the cost program as a whole has been implemented. I wish you uh, good success. And I also like to thank you for your commitment to this, uh, to this initiative. So thank you again. And uh, I'm delighted to be present here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke.
We are going to keep forward according to our program. The next person uh, invited is the Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine, Mr. Oleksandr Kubrako. Please, you have the microphone. Good day to everybody. The Infrastructure Transparency Index is one of the commonly accepted international uh, indicators that Ukraine is assessed in the international environment. I am glad that ET is in introduced in Ukraine. This is an important indicator that shows the openness of the public authorities and the level of interaction between the state and the po population. Um, transparency um, and uh, um, information um, Openness is uh, important in our work. From the very first work in this industry, day, uh, in this industry our team uh, was standing on the availability and the publicity of information. This is necessary for Ukrainian road service and for Ministry of Infrastructure as, as the whole. Dozens of new uh, online registers were started and uh, public um, discussions were held with the journalists, among other events. Many things were done this year together with Cost Ukraine and with other um, projects that are initiated by our donors, donors and partners. And we hope that this year we're going to do even more in the openness of the registers as far as the use of technology is concerned, the ones that uh, simplify the participation of uh, public and citizen participation to control what is happening in the industry. The fact that in ivano Frankivsk, Lvivsk and uh, Vinnytsia region are ET uh, leaders uh, shows that we began choosing the right path. And I'm glad that U Ukrainian road service and uh, the big construction presidential program shows um, good pace and good results. Open information policy in the area is opened uh, as a result of this. This year, it is important for us to launch the principle of um, price formation that are working today in the projects that are implemented together with the EBRD and the World Bank with the European Investment Bank. These principles of price formation are normal for the European Union, but we hope that finally, uh, in all the other projects that are implemented in Ukraine, it is going to also be, these principles are going to be working this year and hope very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Uh, being the trusted partner on of cost initiative, Mr. Alexander also provided some inside information to our event because uh, you will hear direct um, numbers from our um, assessment uh, experts I'm very grateful and I hope that Cost Ukraine is going to um, make every effort, effort for the extension and deepening of this cooperation for the uh, improvement of our cost standards. And the results that we saw as, um, as a result of this study will be evident at the end of the study from the member of uh, the uh, oversight and consultation uh, board uh, of cost. And today we are going to already move on to what we have been waiting for. And I would like to invite Mr. David Zamora, who is the main author of the methodology that we used for our work this year and who helped us to implement this methodology, this study, to be fulfilled in Ukraine. Mr. David is going to tell us what the methodology consists of and what are the basis, what is the basis, the foundation of our approach when we were uh, carrying out this measurement. Uh, so, Mr. David, the microphone is yours.
there are just a few slides I would like to share to refer about the infrastructure transparency index methodology and introduce you to the to the index. Um, so here we have a, a, a basic definition that is written in the methodology in the in the manual of the index. And from this um, definition, you can see that this is an instrument that assesses or evaluates uh, levels of infrastructure transparency, but also evaluates uh, the processes that are, are related to enable that uh, transparency in the infrastructure sector. So we're not only evaluating with this instrument um, the information that is disclosed, but also the processes that empower um, the different procurement entities to be transparent. This was a process that was also uh, designed in a collaborative way and it's based on international good practices and lessons learned. Uh, most of them built uh, throughout the years um, a, as part of cost uh, experience and, and knowledge. Um, the index is integrated by four main dimensions. The first dimension is what we are calling enabling environment. Uh, this dimension evaluates the national context uh, most related to uh, the uh, regulatory framework ex existing in the country, as well as uh, the existence of some digital information tools that will allow citizens to easy access to information. The other three dimensions are related to procurement entities. The second dimension, capacities and processes, evaluates the existing knowledges, uh, basic use of uh, information, uh, digital information tools by procurement entities, the definition or institutional institutionalization of processes as inside those uh, procurement entities. All those concepts are evaluated in dimension two. And then in, in dimension three, we have uh, citizen participation. And here in this dimension, the ITI evaluates uh, the opportunities that are offered uh, for the citizens to participate and also the quality of those uh, opportunities. How well um, does the procurement entity uh, understands and uses the information that collects from citizen participation. And lastly, on the fourth dimension, we have the information disclosure. And this dimension focuses in evaluating the information that is disclosed by different um, uh, infrastructure projects uh, conducted by the selected procurement entities. When we look at this, uh, uh, these four dimensions, uh, we can see that the ITI is built on a very basic formula that tells us that the outcomes or the quality of outcomes do not, do not only depend on loss, but they also depend on, on the capacities. And um, we can see that the, the instrument, what it does is that provides a depth and a, a deep evaluation to these basic concepts or the formula um, by a subset of indicators that are underneath each one of these four dimensions. The outputs that the infrastructure index provides are uh, scores based on the indicators that are all evaluated that uh, show what is the national condition and also the condition of the procurement entities that were evaluated. Um, the main objective of this information is to raise awareness about the strengths and weaknesses in public infrastructure transparency to develop a collaborative agenda among stakeholders to raise transparency and accountability standards within the sector. And the third main output is to guide public leaders, both at a centralized and decentralized levels, uh, sorry, to build uh, capacities to strengthen transparency and accountability in the sector. The structure of the index, as, as, as I, I was telling you, is uh, we have on the very top level of, in, of the index, the four dimensions that are evaluated. Each one of those dimensions are integrated by a group of variables. Those variables are integrated by a group of sub-variables. And finally, those sub-variables are integrated by a group of indicators. So when we conduct an evaluation, we evaluate uh, these very specific details that you can see on the indicators. 
And the result of that evaluation is a, a scores to each one of these components that disclose or show uh, what is the current situation in the country uh, about all those, these concepts that we are evaluating. To collect the data, we have two main approaches uh, for collecting the information in, in, the, in the four dimensions. Um, dimension one, the enabling environment in the national situation, and the information that is disclosed by infrastructure projects, that's dimension four, information disclosure, those two dimensions are evaluated to the data that is available online. So we evaluate that through desktop research. The other two dimensions, capacities and processes and citizen participation are evaluated through a survey that is uh, shared <clears throat> with procurement entities for them to uh, provide information and, uh, and help us to, to conduct the, 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 to implement the, the, the ITI. This evaluation, this, this information that is shared by the procurement entities is cross-checked, is verified. And once it is, it is considered as final and, and can be um, uh, used as, as uh, to be processed. Here you have the, you can see the main picture of the implementation process of the index. We have basically a four stage model on which uh, the ITI uh, can be implemented and was actually implemented in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, at the first step, we have the preparation where we focus in integrating the evaluation team in training the evaluation team and in, in supporting and, and, and uh, preparing different materials that can be used uh, in selecting the procurement entities uh, sample, also selecting the infrastructure projects that will be uh, evaluated, uh, all those issues and logistics, of course, where uh, the team organizes all the different um, issues that will allow them to collect the data uh, with the procurement entities especially. All that is uh, as part of the preparation stage. Then we have the second stage, which is evaluation. Here's where the data is actually collected um, through the different um, mechanisms I, I, recently, I recently described. Then the data is processed. Where, here's where we apply the formula is convert the data that was collected into 100 uh, uh, point um, scores. And finally, the, 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 the reporting is when the team works in the preparation of the final reports and um, uh, develops this type of events for presenting those results and also offers uh, follow-up um, actions to try to support the national environment, the, the government authorities, the procurement entities, uh, supporting them in, in also in working on the different things that uh, can be identified from the results of the index. So this is was this was a very brief uh, presentation with the objective to introduce the ITI, uh, the main concepts that are evaluated in the ITI, the process of how the data is collected, and I will allow now the floor um, for the for the team to present the different results. Thank you. Thank you, David. I would like to thank you for the support which you provided to us as part of the project implementation. We're very grateful. I would also like, my friends, we have heard the theory as to how all of this uh, evaluation was to be carried out. Let's now move on to um, I would like to invite our uh, Mr. Nadia Babinska-Virna, our expert who was actually carrying out the uh, research, the evaluation using the methodology that was developed by the Cost International Secretariat. Ms. Nadia, uh, please pr present the results of your um, evaluation to us. Greetings. Thank you, uh, Svetoslav. Thank you, David. I can imagine how difficult it is for him to speak. This is about 4 a.m. For, uh, for you, so great respect goes to you. And definitely, we're going to move on to the results of the um, assessment, and we have 
now we have representative from the selected organization with whom we were keeping in touch and we're not going to make it very long but we will use this time to tell as to how we did everything how we selected the recurring entities and let us look at the results of the uh, evaluation i am trying to share my screen with you and as soon as it is on we will be able to see i hope everything is seen okay we can continue great so within the infrastructure transparency index we evaluated as it was developed in collaboration with uh, the experts and david was leading us through this um, experience so everything that he mentioned we were basing on in the course of um, implementation of it in order for iti in order for us to have everything reliable um, trustworthy rip uh, to have objective results to have we hope that we are unbiased enough and we hope that this iti will continue and will be evaluated the uh, as the process of uh, infrastructure transparency including in, re in ukraine we try to base our results on the sources and we will tell you as to which those are we'd like uh, we looked at the national level and the international level in order to see the differences and if we talk about the main um, dimensions as david um, mentioned this is the envi enabling environment and as we assessed we um, evaluated legislation this was a desk desk study uh, but the rest of the dimensions as capacities and processes for um, procuring entities citizen participation information disclosure by pe this was done through interviews we carried out interviews with pe's and then we checked the words that we received from representatives of pe's so what are the key criteria for evaluation and how we selected the PEs and how we formed the um, sample for the PE assessment? First of all, considering that Ukraine has one of the most large scope project of infrastructure programs is the big construction project. A lot of information is av available. A lot of discussion is done. A lot of um, public interest revolves around this. That's why we were firstly paying attention to the uh, PEs within this projects. And then we try to uh, ensure different times of PEs, autonomous, uh, state, national, Mission, uh, ministries, um, agencies, and then local at the uh, level of um, local councils and administrations. We also wanted to make sure that PEs have infrastructure projects that are considerable, that are significant. So we also were looking at the procuring budgets of these PEs. As the result, we selected 13 state administrations, primarily the ones that these are primarily PEs or uh, structural uh, divisions of state administration who are part of the big uh, construction. These were 10 uh, road services that are part of Ukrainian road service um, and a share of uh, state enterprises, which are variable because uh, we're very versatile because we wanted to select enterprises at the national level, uh, but they don't really have the infrastructure projects because their budgets are uh, low but we have one financing of infrastructure projects as state enterprise and the other six are at the local level they were established but by, by uh, local state administration and are subordinate to them and they were also fulfilling some infrastructure projects so how we focused on infrastructure projects, how we selected infrastructure projects. We were looking at the size of the procurement budget of the PEs. We were looking as to how these projects were implemented. What is the element of implementation? We're talking about payments. We used open sources for that information. This is Prozoro procurement procurement um, system and public finance portal whenever we selected the uh, list for 2020 we also use some of the 2019 the first two that 
uh, were uh, eligible according to our criteria, 99 or 98 or 100 percent of payments and with good uh, procurement budgets. The uh, evaluation was done during February and April. We um, processed data from public sources, from public organizations like websites and social media pages. And we then also were talking in interviews with the representatives of the uh, PEs. Unfortunately, five uh, PEs, these were mainly state administration. They whether uh, refused to talk with us or said we don't have time now and we need to postpone this until uh, later that we don't know when. So we um, assessed th all of these organizations um, according to our uh, dimension four. We still have that in the rating. They still get a score. They just have zero for uh, our dimension is two and three because communication with us is also transparency element. And since they didn't want to do that, we gave them a zero. So that we evaluated third, 30 procuring entities. We From a big construction, we selected some of the organization. And then among other 500 state enterprises, we selected some. And from ministry, and state agencies. Unfortunately, we weren't able to select any because they didn't have any completed projects, um, uh, infrastructure projects. That's why there we had to regroup a little bit. And as a result, we were assessing 13 local administration, 10 road services, and seven state enterprises. And we were as evaluating 60 infrastructure projects in total. And now the main thing, the main results of our um, infrastructure transparency index. Are you ready? Let's go. So in compliance with our study, as David already mentioned, and Katerina mentioned, and Svetoslav uh, highlighted, this is a pilot um, and we will continue working on the methodology, continue working for it to um, reflect the situation and the leg legal framework is in Ukraine more and more better. Uh, ITI in Ukraine um, national score is 62.18 out of 100, which is greater than a half. The best results is the enabling environment where PEs work, which is legislative environment, availability of um, tools for um, information disclosure, that um, equals 70.2%. 70, 70 so enabling environment shows that Ukraine has every um, possibility to have transparency of infrastructure and receive all the information. However, we had um, lower uh, capacities and processes among the PEs because it's 64, 6.69 out of 100. Why? Because these organizations are newly established or the procedures are not well in place or have not had public information access in a procedure. They um, are working within the national framework and that's normal, but there are some peculiarities. There are some needs, some uh, pinpointedly for the uh, gadgets for the equipment or uh, for the PEs to have um, difficulties with web resources or it is difficult to find an organization so uh, without some advanced information search uh, experience. So that's why this dimension has um, a lower result. However, we have even lower than that results for in, um, citizen dis participation. Why? Because we have specificity for infrastructure project where the customers, the planners of infrastructure projects is one entity uh, uh, from the governmental authority or some um, communities, but the implementation is done through PEs. And at the planning um, stage, very often this PE is not involved because they are stepping into the um, infrastructure project at the time of procurement and fulfillment of the project. That's why so often PEs don't even understand why we need to communicate with uh, public if we are already implementing this project which was planned by this community. And very often resources are not even spent for the information, for the uh, awareness of the public um, representatives. Uh, and these 
potential users of the project, whether this is a community or cities or other settlements that are to receive this infrastructure project. There's not an understand that we need to involve and inform the citizens. And a fourth dimension is, informa uh, dimension is information disclosure. We'll talk more about that. We have 59 out of 100. This is disclosure of all of the uh, information in compliance with uh, cost um, infrastructure dis disclosure standards from um, information to implementation and to in, into um, monitoring. Why this is so low? Because um, perhaps these, uh, these are um, in uh, projects that can be found on the website of the uh, state um, fund for the development of infrastructure and the technical oversight um, why because technical oversight is part of the procuring entity and information to, uh, as to who is doing what is quite difficult to receive uh, except for the website of the um, information in the area of uh, construction very rarely do PEs uh, publish information about the fulfillment of their infrastructure project on their websites. Uh, more depth on each of the um, dimension as to uh, enabling environment, we see that we have 100% on the access of public information regulatory project. We have the law. The uh, standards were already included in the provision um, on the public uh, information uh, disclosure, we have cost portal, we have unified uh, digital system in the construction, we have uh, geospatial data platform, uh, it is going to be launched. It is only about the desire and the capacities of PEs and the government to publish this information in compliance with the standard. So the general score is 70.2. The best is legislation. Then when we're, when we're talking about evaluation of PE, there are may, three main um, uh, variables, capacities and processes, citizen participation, information disclosure. And we see that as a, in the uh, total of all of these dimensions, we have our winners. Uh, the road service of ivano frankivsk region got the greatest score of over 83% uh, uh, of the uh, Department of Road Economy in the Viv Regional State Administration received 83.1% and road service in the Viv region is 76.43%. So as we look at the uh, winners, we're looking whether uh, the budget is important, whether transparency is important. So we see where the sector has to do with road and transport. It had the highest score in the rating, and mainly these are road services. Why? Because they have responsible employees who are responsible for public disclosure of information and uh, citizen participation involvement. They have websites uh, and uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages and so on. And also, I would like to highlight, as we're going to talk more about state enterprises, very often state enterprises are new uh, that were established in 19 or 20, and, and their processes are in this formation stage. And we would like to uh, highlight the Vinitsa region um, a state enterprise, so thank you for joining us because this is one of the best ones that we evaluated. And I think Mr. Vitali is going to talk about uh, citizen participation events and um, they can share their uh, experience with us. And the uh, last places um, are for the uh, PEs that refuse to speak with us. This can be the Dnipropetrovsk, um, regional organization may have a very high score for public um, for information disclosure for uh, fulfillment of infrastructure project at each stage of its fulfillment however since they did not agree or they refused to talk with us at the, on the inter during the interview that's why they have one of the lowest positions and that's and they actually brought all of the rating of ukraine down that's what so openness of each PE is also has an impact of the national image as well. And now if we talk about, uh, about specific um, 
indicators for each um, uh, dimension for example capacities and process we see that digital capacities and basic knowledge show us pretty good um, situation people know about these issues about um, openness pu uh, public access to information however very often uh, there they cannot find their way they cannot understand inquiry uh, and what it is when we understand that more uh, work is necessary for training with the PEs to provide basic um, knowledge uh, in the area of infrastructure projects and it will it's worth working more within the framework of um, harmonization of the processes including public um, involvement because those harmonized practices of um, public involvement at the PE level how different information is used uh, as it is received from people or uh, according to to the procedure of use some uh, tools of participation at public discussion for example so it is not hormon harmonized and it is quite a person uh, sees something or has feedback in Facebook or something like that with this which is great but we need to uh, normalize this so everybody has equal possibilities if we looked at the um, uh, disclosure practice uh, we see that we have the oversight and planning um, issues have the lowest score we cannot even reach uh, one-third uh, because um, the pro procurement itself provides all of the information at Prozoro of course there's the question at Prozoro information quality but overall the projects that we evaluated could be found within Prozoro system and if you now look at the um, indicators of uh, the ITI according to the type of organization as we assessed we can see that the best uh, indicators are uh, among the road services in on average this is about 80 plus scores um, points out of a hundred at the same time uh, state and uh, local administration have one of the lowest indicators however Lviv administration has uh, is the leader so if we look in details um, for each of the organization for example um, Ivano Frankivsk road service regardless of the fact that quite often they had not very high assessment evaluation in the uh, third dimension they still are um, pub, uh, disclosing their data in a good quality on different platforms you can find a lot of information about their infrastructure projects and in general they have quite high score and we see that the uh, red line is the average average in Ukraine for all PEs that were evaluated so we see that in principle the result is quite good for this uh, procurement organization and our greetings go to them and also we see the department for road economy in Lviv region um, in principle they have the greatest score uh, also for information disclosure and for among other things uh, uh, capacities and processes I would like to also highlight that some PEs are quite proactive in engaging uh, citizen citizens not only in the course of planning of projects but also in the implementation in particular their um, public councils there are meetings uh, on site and this is what Lviv regional state administration is doing and its department of road economy they have a score is quite high which is um, 84.74 so as we see the road service in the Lviv region they have 90 out of uh, 100 points for uh, citizen participation in the um, course of uh, infrastructure projects perhaps uh, Madame Ludmilla is going to be able to uh, speak more but as far as we understand the road service has many situations where briefings are taking play, time, place online conversations if the communication is very active in large uh, or not so large infrastructure projects at the regional level we would also like to highlight the um, 
small uh, procurement organization as um, Church of uh, City Council, uh, which we uh, included according to our methodology as po uh, on the list of our PEs. Although in general they are ranking 13, they have uh, uh, 70 over 70 points out of 100. This council uh, tries to disclose information, though their resources are low, and even though this is a city council, the, uh, their information is um, uh, published on the website, and you see the, the reasons and the results of these projects, and we see that they try to participate and to bring in uh, citizens with, into the pro processes um, on the infrastructure project implementation. That's why their score is high. And as I said, I wanted to talk about um, Vinica region uh, road service. They have powerful capacities for implementation of measures for, inclu for um, improvement of um, transparency level, and they are going to, they're planning on doing that. Mr. Vitali is going to probably talk more. This is the only PE uh, that spoke about benefits to PE for, due to transparency because the level of trust uh, grows, and thanks to the growth of the level of trust, even the amalgamated um, territorial uh, communities uh, turn to them uh, in order to make projects together and that's why the procurement budget grows and I think Mr. Vitali will be able to uh, talk in greater detail on his note. You have uh, contacts uh, information for those people who were working in uh, Katarina Basova was coordinating the entire uh, process. Tatiana Lutai was dealing with the data. We uh, made our selection together and we worked together on the uh, evaluation and the scores. And, and perhaps she will be able to provide more information. And the rest uh, is information of Svetoslav, David, and Evelyn who were working on uh, in the course of this evaluation. This is it that I have for now. If you have any more questions, please. Thank you, Nadia. It seems to me that indeed there are going to be many questions. This topic is interesting. I would like to highlight, and we are going to talk more for sure about this, that we are going to invite all of the stakeholders and colleagues for discussion of these results and discussion of our recommendations. However, today I would like to also uh, bring in uh, to this communication the actual um, people who were participating in the evaluation. I thank you to everybody who joined, who were active in the process. And if you uh, already mentioned today, I uh, suggest we begin with the absolute leader of today's rating, road service in Ivano-Frankivsk region. And I would like to invite uh, them to tell us a couple of words, perhaps uh, give feedback and their impression from the participation in this project. Ms. Ludmila Strajnik, who on behalf of the uh, road service was participating in the interview. Uh, Madam Ludmila, please. Good day, dear friends. I I am very grateful to participate in this conference today. This is a big honor for our uh, road service to be among the winners, to be the winner. It so turned out that it is our road service that um, enjoyed this first interview when they didn't have a previous um, experience. But I'm grateful to Katarina, the speaker, who uh, behaved in much... Um, correctness in our in the course of our communication we uh, spent three hours and it, we had great understanding and mutual cooperation which gave a, a push to additional projects participation in this project is socially significant for our uh, state enterprise because we 
uh, are working with uh, state budget. And if the state allocates great money for road infrastructure development today, that it is in, uh, important for the um, stakeholder organization and for the uh, citizens to see the transparency of the use. And that's and our service has all the possibilities for that. We have um, digital system for Prozoro placement for uh, posting on other public platforms. This all also includes beginning with a process of planning, designing of uh, the bid procedure, the tender procedure, and all the way to um, winner um, establishment and fulfillment of the work. Our citizens are involved in this project in a very active way. They have platform for this. Ukrainian uh, Automobile Road Service has uh, recently developed many of these platforms where anybody who's willing could show and could join uh, cost process and to give hints and in particular within our road service we have a website that has uh, digital applications where quickly uh, any uh, user can have in receive information of course there's also correspondence and uh, responses to mail uh, inquiries of citizens but together with that in our modern digital time it is important to receive information within minutes of application or inquiry whether it is about transport uh, whether um, uh, notification about any road potholes or if they want to receive information as to who's doing some works and what money is used for that and be, uh, Facebook has been of great help in that um, process because uh, these short text messages make it easier to respond if we trace how many inquiries were previously and within the last year then it is obvious that people are trusting these platforms and they are satisfied with this type of level of information provision and the main thing the priority for our service uh, is uh, transparency of public communication uh, with public uh, entities, uh, we are very open. We are providing exhaustive uh, responses to all of the inquiries uh, that uh, communities are interested in, or state organization, or um, local self-governing authorities. Thank you very much, Madame Ludmilla. Thank you for your participation in this evaluation, for your uh, frank conversations, and for the quality of communication. You probably also wanted to mention um, Madame Nadia, who directly spoke with you. Uh, I was very glad to hear what you said about how much it was a, a comfortable way of communication. And we hope that um, people, other colleagues, will hear what you're talking, saying about this, especially those who refused um, participation in the interview and will definitely be able to do that if they are selected. Thank you, Madame Ludmilla. We're going to move on to our uh, next speaker. Let's uh, uh, hear Mr. Vitaly Gorobchuk, and I would like to comment in brief. Uh, I see that we have uh, questions in our chat, and I hope that after this uh, block of feedback from the state um, organizations and our colleagues who participated in the interviews, we will have uh, brief responses to these questions. And Nadia, I would like to also ask you for your help. So Mr. Vitali, please, the microphone is yours. Dear colleagues, dear participants of the forum, I beg your pardon, we cannot hear you. First of all, I would like to thank the participants for such high assessment of our work and for the per, um, opportunity to use and uh, to be part of the evaluation we hope that this we think that this is a very useful experience for us and very good for our continuous guideline guidance in the future it's hard to comment our positive uh, achievements uh, over the past year although we have obviously seen them you can see them with a bare eyes if we take procurement then 
year before, the Anti-Monopoly Committee uh, received 23 complaints and only three were denied, others were granted. We have um, taken the positive experience of Ukrainian uh, automobile road service and their requirements to tender documentation when bid is announced. And this year we have already um, worked on all of our procurement and now we're in the process of the fulfillment of road repair works. And only one complaint was uh, submitted to the anti-monopoly committee uh, this year and the committee was on our side uh, denying the claim. It seems to me that if we take the experience, as uh, my Ivana Frankiv's colleague said, that our uh, enterprise in Vinica is developing, is developing quickly. Thanks to a coordinated work of the entire team, we have certain achievements. G a great role here is um, thanks to the um, good level of remuneration. The average uh, salary of 25, 26,000 grivna, which is considerable for Vinita. People uh, hold their work as precious and they fulfill it with every diligence. As far as uh, openness and information disclosure, we're not doing anything that others aren't. First of all, we are open. We're open, first of all, with your organization with, and with other media as well. We have our website. We have uh, pages in Facebook and Instagram and every other possible media. We have subscribers uh, among all of the amalgamated uh, territorial communities in the region, region. They participate in discussion of our projects and we're simply open to mass media. We provide maximum amount of information to all of the inquiries that can concern us. To say that we are doing something extraordinary? No, we're not. Good communication with regional administra state administration full understanding with the head of the state administration who is continuously involved in our projects, who travels with us to the project sites and engages with his authority, engages with his um, uh, words, of the heads of the amalgamated uh, territorial community heads, this also uh, brings its results. As I mentioned, we already completed the procurement process and now we're working on the fulfillment. We are simply doing our work. Perhaps, Mr. Vitali, tell us about how you share leaflets about your activity among the people. I think this is something to share because you spread information. Why I'm saying this is important? Because people don't do that. They think that people should come to them with a the project, but you are going to people. You're telling them that this is what we're doing. Here who we are. Call, talk to us. Uh, tell us about your service. Tell us about your 24-7 service. So those are two points. I think these are in, uh, considerable. Thank you. Oh, we cannot hear you. Yes, we have a dispatcher service that indeed works 24-7. It was especially important during winter period where there were many um, uh, road snow problems and the dispatcher service was working closely with all of the other authorities of uh, Vinitsa region that ensure road traffic, police, um, emergency service and others. Concerning the fact that we go to the amalgamated communities, yes, we're not just uh, doing leaflets, we're having meetings on site uh, with the heads of the uh, communities. We listen to, uh, to citizens and make a step forward and we're working exactly on site where it is necessary for the community. The roads are very long in our region. This is the second uh, place in Ukraine over 6,000 uh, kilometers of uh, local roads. And it is important for us to know their conditions. Uh, we have seven uh, oversight uh, specialists and it is important for us to know where exactly uh, road repairs necessary primarily. So without close communication with the regional road service and uh, communities, we would not be able to work through the full um, power. And this work is already well developed uh, the um, uh, heads of the communities have my mo uh, cell phone number and I have theirs. After the um, 
elections, many things were uh, changed, but we already um, organized our work and we don't have any problems. And the fact that we were, were talking to um, uh, the specific projects, yes, everybody knows that big construction uh, is a project, a group of projects from the state budget, and it is important for all of the uh, country for the road repair and other infrastructure projects. But still, proper maintenance of all roads in, within Vinyasa region, let me talk about my region only, that money isn't going to be sufficient still. Then, st yes, we're working and we're engaging budgets from the communities for special funding, and they actively are engaged. And today, over 30 million, this is the budget that we have engaged from the communities. This is the money that remain within the communities and they are free from the access duty. Do you have any more questions, please? Thank you, Mr. Vitali. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed hearing uh, what you said about openness, disclosure. This is significant. And we're moving on now. And I would like to clarify whether we have here or whether he can join us, Mr. Mikola Odenotsky from Lviv uh, Regional State Administration. Mr. Mikola, are you with us? Very well. Mr. Main, perhaps Mr. McCullough is going to join us later. I would like to invite to speak one more participant of our evaluation, Mr. Oleg Tarasuk, the uh, Director of State Enterprise Funding for Infrastructure Projects. Mr. Oleg, are you with us? I have seen you here earlier. Very well. Then we will allow their involvement in the very end. Dear colleagues, we have uh, questions here. Let's uh, provide brief answers. I would like to indicate maybe what somebody missed, as it was mentioned by Nadia. The sample this year of within our pilot project, and I highlight that this is a pilot, we couldn't include all of the organizations, and the um, sample had to be substantiated by a certain decisions. And one of the basic decisions was to fund ourselves on the list of projects that are published publicly at uh, the cabinet minister's website, and the list of uh, objects that are part of big construction. Concerning the organization budget, uh, we had the following criteria for selection. I beg your pardon, perhaps I would like to also add to these criteria. There was a question as to why um, river and maritime enterprises did, were not included. For state enterprises, we had to select amongst 517 of enterprises around Ukraine and uh, definitely um, some were unselected due to the budget. The first criteria is the big construction. The second criteria, as Vyacheslav said, is the budget. The third criteria is infrastructure projects and payment of 99.8 uh, to 100%. The com combination of this criteria helped us select uh, the uh, PEs. This is just uh, a sample. We don't. It doesn't matter to us who to uh, evaluate, whether river, maritime, or road. Perhaps uh, this is uh, the selection this time, and maybe sample will be different next time. Thank you, Nadia. Therefore, there was another question. I, the question there was about um, financial accountability. Why was it not called that? And I think it was about the uh, road service of Ivana Frankivsk, if the in profit is zero, where their effectiveness is assessed. In our index, we assessed transparency. And uh, the effectiveness issue uh, requires different methodology for the uh, identification of criteria for uh, efficiency uh, 
indicators for the PE. So if David and other colleagues hear us now, you can take it for your further development of the updated methodology. And there's another question as to whether T Team Lowe was asking whether the uh, ultimate beneficiary um, owner was assessed. The PEs were assessed um, if they are state uh, enterprises, if they are state authorities or state services, and therefore UBOs of these companies were whether administrations or councils or state state itself and the government and so on so in principle that was not done but if you are interested in private organization that these PEs work with then we were not looking at the corruption element for the procure procurement itself we were looking at whether information on this procurement and this project is available in public resources if you have a proposal to look deeper not on uh, ITI but also the effectiveness transparency and a corrupt element of infrastructure then that could also be part of the updating of the methodology thank you Nadia I will add that indeed uh, the evaluation within ITI was carried out among PEs that are um, administrators of public funds so they're using uh, the state or local budgets or administrators of um, money that were obtained by Ukraine within the framework of international loans so thank you now please continue if you have any questions coming up please continue writing them in the chat we will try to provide as many answers as we can we have heard and seen the evaluation directly we have seen the uh, resume of um, findings and I would like to say that definitely all of this data and information including for each procurement entity as it is shown by Nadia uh, for the selected ones since we're not able to take your time until the late evening uh, looking into all 30 in great detail but all of the information is going to be published as infographics a little later um, uh, two conditions for the report that uh, contains absolutely all of the input data and, and all of the results of the evaluation uh, is going to be published however it's, it is important for, to go, as we go on uh, it is important as to what happens next what are the bottlenecks uh, that we identified and what we propose to do with it where to pay attention and I would like to invite Victor Nastula uh, the member of the consultancy um, head of Eastern Europe and Central Asia OCP and member of cost Ukraine um, MSG Mr. Victor, please, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Svetoslav. First of all, I would like to greet and congratulate all of the Cost Ukraine and Cost uh, International team with this pilot launch. This work that reflects and gives much space for um, consideration and further action, I hope. Let me begin by saying that I am honored to um, represent the uh, uh, OCP and, uh, and MSG of cost in Ukraine. Cost Ukraine lays um, in its, uh, puts into its foundation three important sectors, uh, public sector, uh, business and the government. Uh, we have representative of the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Ministry of Development of Communities. We have representatives of Ukrainian Energy Company. We have uh, representatives of Business Association and Association of International Road Transport and um, Trade Union in the uh, transport uh, sphere. And, and uh, since recently, the National Association of uh, Road uh, Companies ADOS, Transparency Ukraine, My Road, and so on. This is an in initiative that takes regard of the opinions of different groups and in its activity tries to work in order to um, have all of the groups satisfied and all of the groups to receive benefits from this initiative. 
When we speak of transparency, we need to understand that each of these groups receives its benefits. For example, for the public, um, transparency is a possibility to prioritize certain projects, to participate in development of those projects that would ensure their priority and help resolve their issues and their problems. Uh, for example, the absence of a soccer field or the um, low quality of a road or um, absence of um, lighting fixture or um, education. For business, this is under uh, transparency, a good understanding that the, um, the rules of the game are equal. They are non-discriminatory. They um, are with regard to uh, modern innovations and give them both a possibility to earn money. And we uh, heard today that big construction is great investment today, but also to develop themselves, develop their business, innovative approaches, develop their region. And for the government, obviously, this is trustworthiness, uh, whether this is mundane, but this is adds to the ratings, the possibility to work um, to play in a civilized well, way and to develop the sphere of infrastructure. When we talk about ITI, we need to understand that it's not just launching something hyped, that we're going to write press releases to say how good, how bad we are, but it is a tool that allows us to understand where we are now. That's the first study, the first evaluation, and we see already today uh, as to where we work quite well and where we still are sagging. But this is also a road sign that shows us where to work from now on. This is a road map as to what we need to do in order to improve our results. And it is wonderful Then within this index we have 50 organizations and we can learn uh, whether it's 30 organization and we can learn from each other we see the approaches that work in some regions they could uh, be repeated in other regions and I would like to share a presentation this is very brief recommendations as a result of the uh, evaluation as to what we can provide to all of the participants of the rating and to the stakeholders and the ministry ministries the policy makers the cabinet of ministers to uh, the public to the business in order to improve our positions from now on first of all i would like to say that once big construction was launching uh, launched we say uh, we see great transparency advancement. This is a map that shows to everybody who's interesting the objects of infrastructure that are being implemented for the money that you and I give. So this is already a big uh, step forward for cost. So if you ever uh, came to this map and used it, this is already obvious that this uh, map covers the component of public communication on the part of the state but it does not provide many benefits to neither to citizens in principle nor representatives of business what do you need to do in order for a tool like this to become more useful more efficient and would help um, everybody uh, receive pres benefits of transparency and the transparency benefits are huge when we talk about infrastructure then this is involvement of credit um, funds with lower interest. We have wonderful example of Mariupol city, which uh, during the recent years is the most transparent city in Ukraine. And thanks to their positions in the uh, city transparency rating, Mariupol was able to engage uh, European investment bank um, funds under very low uh, interest for public development so recommendations i have two blocks number one is recommendations for the public authorities and it, first of all this is at the central level when we again are speaking about transparency we need to understand as to why we need the transparency what are the benefits and for whom and how we ensure these benefits we have heard that in principle we have quite good positions uh, for, uh, for the ecosystem. But in order for us to receive better uh, access to information, even at the map that we have, we are lacking data on planning on implementation of contracts. We have a tool that, in principle, allows sufficient 
publishing disclosure of information and data. This is the standard for uh, cost standard for information disclosure and OC for IDS standard. And it uh, gives benefits also uh, to the um, community representatives and business and uh, the state uh, because each one receives information that is useful for them. Obviously, infrastructure is a very um, clear uh, sphere. The project management is on high here and w at every level we have planning, accountability, control points and uh, it is OC for IDS is the standard that uh, makes it possible for all of the approaches for structured infrastructure projects to communicate um, publicly to all of the stakeholders. So our recommendation is to get the standard approved at the state level, to organize accrual of um, acquisition of information and, uh, as feedback of the publishing of the standards and to minimize the effort that needs to be spent by stakeholders, first of all, by public institutions, state institutions, in order to fulfill the requirements of the standards. In particular, and um, some of the um, ways we can automatize the data acquisition um, for, so that we avoid problems uh, for uh, data acquisition in compliance with this uh, standard. And finally, we need to uh, organize training, spread methodological recommendations, why the standard is necessary, how to work with it, and what do we do in principle so that all the data beginning from with planning of the project and all the way to implementation of the projects, these data could be disclosed for everybody. And um, on the map, as it was showed in the previous slide, you would see not just what this object is, where it is constructed, and in some instances is budget, but in some ways more information for the reasons for the establishment of this project, for public hearing, for the stages of implementation of the project, possible complaints that come in, and so on. And finally, the recommendations on engagement of uh, public, public element. This is a very important element because infrastructure that is built, it is constructed not for the, pub, uh, for the road service or the construction uh, company. It is built for the citizens so that we can have better services and everybody present here. We are using roads. We are using the social infrastructure. And it is uh, significant so and very important so that the positive examples that we heard as they are used in Vinitsa region, for example, that they would be uh, forwarded on and this experience would be shared. So those approaches would be formalized and procedures developed and the standard ad adopted for communication with public and internal pro uh, policies for public in engagement would be developed and the communication norm would be proactive and not reactive for us to wait for, for a, if somebody to turn to us with a pro problem, but we communicate the success of our results and we see this communication in the regions and at the central level at the big construction portal and um, social media and websites. These are new approaches for communication with public engagement which are necessary, useful uh, for uh, bringing up the trustworthiness and improving our work because if we communicate proactively with citizens, we will, might sometimes have less headaches to, in order for regulation of some, let's say, not very correct inquiries or claims. And of course, the positive experience, uh, like it is in Vinitsa, it needs to be communicated outside. It needs to be shared so that great practices could be continued being used. I also want to additionally remark that in the beginning, the Minister of Infrastructure, Mr. Kubrakov, mentioned that they are planning of approving the principles of price formation. This is also a very significant element. I am going to uh, assign it to the standard of OC for IDS. In media, we see many scandals that concern uh, big construction and many um, investigators talk about um, a, uh, over exaggerated pr prices but within this standard we will be able to receive data on the price of similar works compare them and among other things we will be able to um, answer some questions or alleviate the claims um, that are turned to some um, institutions or 
to verify them. So this principle to be adopted and the market to begin using them and would help us to receive good data, uh, quality data in this sphere. Thank you very much. Uh, greetings again. Congratulations to the COST team. And we wish you effective um, implementation of the recommendation, which will help you uh, strengthen your position for further. Thank you, Victor. So colleagues, today, we are going to complete with this this event and I see that we still have some of the inquiries and questions we're gonna make sure to answer to them please pay attention that all of the participants of today's event will definitely receive uh, through their email all of the um, corresponding information this will happen already tomorrow and a little bit later you will receive additional materials I would like to highlight that we will continue inviting everybody interested and whoever has time and possibility we will invite you to further discussions uh, for both findings and recommendations and uh, the next step for cost team is going to be about organization of the work with um, the interested um, authorities of executive power in compliance with the recommendations as we highlighted in our report I would like to thank once again to everybody and should anybody have any uh, final remarks and brief please speak up and we this will conclude our meeting for today Very well then. Once again, thank you for your attention. Please await for that information with uh, report materials and evaluation materials. I would like to thank you very much. Uh, I would like to invite you to all the other events that we're going to have. So keep um, keep looking for more information this event was recorded in YouTube whoever is interested is also going to receive the link to the converted re recording so um, please look for more information from cost since this is just the first step we have a lot of work ahead of us and therefore we will come back with our conversations with you thank you everybody um, thank you to our colleagues we thank you to David and to Nadia, to everybody who was part of this process. And we will see you soon. And thank you very much, colleagues. Have a good day. And I'm wishing you a very productive work week.